Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. Today we're going back to one of my favourite decks which is Green Black Turbo Decks. So I've played this a fair few times on the channel but there's something I wanted to test out today sideboard wise so we're going to go back to it and I'm doing a little bit of testing for the future as well because I've got a big tournament coming up at the end of the year so I sort of want to just see how far we can push different directions with the sideboard. So if you're unfamiliar with this deck we are trying to get Dark Depths into play and then either use Vampire Hex Mage or Thespian Stage to end up with a Dark Depths with no counters to make a 20-20 and then kill our opponent with it. Sometimes using Sejiri Step to push through if we need to. So we've got a load of cards that find our combo pieces. So that's Crop Rotation and Sylvan Scrying. We've got a load of mana to accelerate it out in the form of Spirit Guide and Lotus Petal. We've got Disruption in the form of Thoughtseize and Duress. We also have these four Pithy Needles to name Caracas and Wasteland. Then we have Four Knot of This World to protect our creature for another turn cycle. So we can get around a single Caracas activation or Source of Plowshares or whatever. And that's more or less the main deck in a nutshell. We've got a few little silver bullets in the lands. We've got one Sajiri step to give our Marit Lage protection. We have one Ghost Quarter because we're probably going to have Pith and Needle on Wasteland. So if you've got Pith and Needle on Wasteland, your opponent has a Caracas, your Ghost Quarter is going to be able to take it out. So it just gives you more options to play that way. And usually giving your opponent that one mana is not going to make the difference. We have one Bajuka Bog. Sometimes we're going to need to nuke graveyards, and this is very good at doing it. We have two Beseju. I like having two of these. Gives us two answers to stuff main deck, but it also means that we have green sources. So these just being green sources is really useful for, you know, using our crop rotations and sylvan scryings. Whereas if one of these was a Caracas, that card is very bad in hand. So we're not playing with it. I played main decks without Caracas for a little while now and really liked how they felt. So we're going to keep rolling it that way. The reason I like green black depths other other turbo depths build is because it allows you to play a turn one verdant catacombs and pass in case you need like a certain burst of mana for the next turn you don't have to worry about this land getting wastelanded you can just play it out and then the next turn you can kind of do your thing also means that we have two basics in swamp and uh, sorry swamp and forest which means that we can play around blood moon effects very easily which we'll get to in the sideboard because we also have these eight sources that can cast one half of our answer to those things all right, sideboard wise, what are the answers we're looking at? So we have four Abrupt Decay. This is kind of the catch all, whether it's Ensnaring Bridge, Magus of the Moon, or Blood Moon. Abrupt Decay, Abrupt Decay can hit all of those really effectively, and it can't be counted, so you don't have to worry about, oh, will this resolve? Will it, you know, you're just going to get it. And because we have the ability to get black and green off of these, as well as our fetch land basic mana base, it means these are actually relatively easy to cast. Because these are kind of good catch-alls for most stuff, it means we can actually just jam four of these and kind of be done with it, which is what we're doing here. Now, this sideboard is incredibly focused, as you've probably guessed. So we've got these, which is the answering of the stuff that gets us, as well as a few discard spells in our main deck to hopefully do that. Then decks that want to remove our Merit Lage, we have Steely Resolve for that. This is also very good against Cephalid Breakfast. For decks that are going faster than us, that use the Graveyard, we have Leyline in the Void. For decks that go faster than us and don't necessarily use the graveyard, we have Collector Roof. So that's things like Storm. So the Epic Storm doesn't really need to use the graveyard. This is Painted X, 8 cast, that sort of stuff that can really jam us up. We've just gone for 4 Collector Roof. Now, I don't think this is optimal by any stretch of the imagination, but I just want to see what this deck is like with some sort of big hammer pieces in the sideboard because our main deck is very efficient and does what it does very well. So I'm just seeing if having these Collector Roofs as just a thing saying, okay, this is how we're going to beat some of these matchups. We're kind of just going to rely on these really powerful cyborg cards and then assume that our deck is good enough to do its thing once we've got these in play. Obviously, Lotus Petal doesn't work amazingly with Collector Roof, but if we've got a Lotus Petal, that means we're casting the Collector Roof on turn one, where it's most backbreaking. So that seems fine to me because we're mostly going to know what our game plan is and how we're going to approach the first couple of turns of the game and usually how we're going to go from turn zero to winning the game is all sewn up in our opening hand that's what this deck wants to do and you should be mulliganing quite aggressively for those things all right i think that's described how this deck works and what i'm trying to test out today so why not like comment and subscribe on my videos that really helps me out and doesn't cost you anything if you are in a position to help financially you can become a member of the channel from as little as two pounds a month or you can go for the higher tier which lets you submit donation decks every month which is cool if you want to see your stuff on the channel there's also like a super thanks button and I'm currently thinking about setting up a Patreon, but I'll let you know when that happens. Other than that, I think we're all good. So let's jump into a league with green-black turbo depths. We're into round one. 
this is our opening hand. We cannot find a dark depth with this hand. So rather than trying to draw one of those eight cards, I think we should just mulligan this one. All right, this is a much better hand. This is a turn two 2020 or a turn three 2020 if our hex mage doesn't resolve. This seems fine to me. We can throw back one of our verdant catacombs. We do have to lead out on Urborg. That's not the end of the world here. This gets Wasteland, it does set us back. But if it doesn't, then it's also fine. Would have liked to have had a Thoughtseize in place of like one of these stages or whatever, but turn two, 2020 is a good place to be. So if they play, okay, this is like a prison -y deck. They might not have much to deal with a 2020 here. Shattered Skull Smashing. A Blood Moon. Interesting. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit tricky. So we've got Besages. Like, this game isn't over yet. I think we'll play out this Dark Depth. So if this ever leaves play, we just automatically get a 2020. So we're looking to draw a green source into a Besage. We can get some more information about what sort of deck our opponent is. Okay, Rabble Master. So this is a relatively quick clock. We're pretty good against these sorts of decks, to be honest. Because this just becomes a combo piece for us rather than an obstacle. Okay. So we can play... Vernon Catacombs. Let's try to work out with Per Petal. I think we do play the Petal. They're not really going to be able to blow this up, but they could play something like a Chalice or a Trinisphere. So we're just looking for a Presage, and then we win the game now. Cozy Chaos Adventurer. Obviously, the amount of time we have to win the game isn't the longest in the world. So we're going to take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 this turn. And then next turn, we take 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yep, yeah, so we're dead next turn. So we need to draw the Presage now we do have two in our deck to draw to so let's see if we can a crop rotation this doesn't get us anything useful because of the blood moon nope we're dead we will concede the game i don't think there's anything we can do here no sure so this is a pretty straightforward matchup really so we're boarding these abrupt decays and we'll board out these not of this world and then we're done pretty simple uh, how good is Pith and Needle here, actually? Um, what are we doing with these Pith and Needles? We only saw mono red stuff, so this does just look like the mono red prison-y type deck. So they can have Dead Gone, which is probably going to be more important than anything that our Pith and Needles are going to hit here. So maybe we want these Not of This World instead of the Dead Gones. That seems fine. We could play Collector Roofs here. They don't feel great to me, though. Sure. Uh, it's going to be on the play. Uh, we beat Blood Moon, we don't beat Megs of the Moon, so we have Turn 1, Urborg, with Lotus Petal up. Uh, so this is a Turn 3, 2020, with protection from Blood Moon, but not Megas of the Moon. Is that good enough? You know, turn 1, Urborg, Turn 2, Forest. Yeah, I think we keep this one. It's a bit slow, but our opponent's probably going to be more in on the Blood Moons here. Now, if they play Magus, it's going to be a little bit annoying for us, but we can certainly live through that. So we're going to play out our Airborg first again. We already have Forest in hand here. So we can play out a Lotus Petal, and we can play out a second Lotus Petal if we want to here. Yeah, it gets around Chalice and stuff, so I think that's... And Trinosphere, that's something our opponent's playing. Not that it's particularly great against us. Chromox here. Are we getting... So we have a Besage if we want it. So if they play a Blood Moon, this is actually... This is actively good for us. A Megs of the Moon, less good for us, but we've got outs to this. We've got four Abrupt Decay in our deck. We've also got a Forest already, so we're going to be playing a slightly slower game here. So we're going to get ourselves a Dark Depths here, and we'll pass the turn. Now, if they start doubling up on Blood Moon effects, that becomes awkward for us. But it's honestly better if they play Blood Moon than it is if they play, like, a Cozy Chaos Adventurer. A Chalice for two. We don't care about Chalice for two. Abrupt Decay can't be counted, so we'll just go straight through this. A Vampire Hex Mage. Uh, we can remove the Counter Smith if we want to, if that's a thing we're interested in. Uh, we can play out our Dark Depths. We would have to crack both of these to play our... So if we crack both of these to play our Hex Mage, that's not great for us. But what we can do is we can crack this uh, and make... A swamp here and use one of these to play a vampire hex mage which stops our opponent's attacks that's probably okay and i think we crop rotate this away go and get ourselves a basic swamp and cast this black 
black. So we've still got the Lotus Petal. Uh, what am I doing? I'm just casting straight into the Chalice. Miles away there. What am I... Oh dear. First game of the night and my brain's already frazzled. Not a great start. That's why they put it on two. Right, so we don't get to play the Hex Mage into this. We don't get to play this for the same reasons. We can play out Bayou though. And pass the turn. So we can blow up an artifact at some point. We could blow up this Chalice, but if they drop a Blood Moon, then we're going to feel pretty silly. Although we can just Sylvan Scrying for another Besaiju. Sylvan Scrying doesn't actually do very much for us here. We can't get any lands that actually change the way this board operates. Our opponent's clock is very slow for now, but that could change at any minute. I don't think we're incentivized to blow that up. Okay, so we have an abrupt K here. Uh, we pass the turn, we have this game sewn up, even though I made a little bit of a misplay there and wasted some of our resources like when we didn't need to. A Goblin Rabble Master. Sure. So we can swallow up this Goblin and kill this Magus. This is another reason why Abrupt Decays are good. Can't be counted. Pretty important piece of text. We'll swallow this up. And they can see because we're going to kill them for 20. All right, we made a slight misplay there, but it ended up okay. We could jam these Collector Roofs instead of Not This World, but Collector Roof doesn't feel great if we're having to leverage our petals through a Blood Moon sort of thing. So I think we're probably just fine with this configuration. It gets worse on the play for sure. Uh, this Paducah Bog isn't doing a lot for us other than being a land that we can sacrifice to other stuff. We could replace this for just a Collector Roof, which can block a Magus. I don't hate that. But this isn't really the matchup for Collector Roofs. Um, so I want these for Dead and Gons, potentially. I want them for Collector Roof. We'll, have, we'll do a little split here, just so we've got a guy that can get in the way of a Magus and slow them down. But we're looking to keep a hand um, that does more than this hand does. I think we need to mulligan this for... Okay, so we can cast an Abrupt Decay with this hand. We need to find the Abrupt Decay is the only issue, but I think this is acceptable. We've got the Sylvan Scrying for Poseidon. One of these cards got to go. It's probably not of this world. Right, we're going to have here Blood Moon. Fail the Mirror Break. Okay, that it. Just can find them a Blood Moon or something, though. A thought seize. That's a pretty good one. I think we'll start off on the thought seize. Let's see what our opponent's working with here. Fable of the Mirror Breaker and a Fury. We don't care about the Fury. I guess we take the Fable. And I think we are incentivized to play out this Lotus Petal here. Our opponent can play things like Chalice, which can stop us casting Lotus, Lotus Petal. Right. They pitched a City of Traitors and a Fury. And they're playing a mountain, so we don't have any more information. Cursed Mirror enters the battlefield any creature. So this becomes a Goblin Shaman and has haste, so they get to make two treasure tokens here. Hmm, we need to keep this, I think. So we're taking a slightly slower line here. We're going to Sylvan Scrying for a Thespian stage and then pass a the turn. So in two turns, we can make a 20 20. Which is a little bit slow, but we'll see what our opponent manages against us. Should be quick enough to beat what they're doing, but that can change in an instant. Sozukan, sure. So these have got haste, I believe. It's taken four this turn. Next turn we're taking four, five, six. And then, yeah, this is going to be tight. A Lotus Petal, does that change anything here? Not at all. Uh, so we can blow up this Reflection of Kiki Jiki if we want to. Um, this was a crop rotation to be a lot better for us. Cloud a Lotus Petal here. So we're going green and using one from this so that we can besage you very easily uh, without losing our Lotus Petal next turn. We will cast this for a besage you who endures. I think that's the best option we have here. Okay, so this turn we take two, four, five, six. Next turn we put a 2020 in the way and we block two, but we're taking two, three, four. So that would be us dead. So we have to besage you this reflection of Kiki Jiki, um, which we have to do now, I think. Otherwise, we're going to lose the game. So tight margins on this one. There's a lot of stuff we can lose the game to here. But if they're just on beating us down with these guys, then we're okay. 
If we can untap, then I'll be all right. We'll play a Thespian stage. So the thing that gets us here is the the four mana thing that deals us loads of damage. I can't remember what it's called. Um, is this until end of turn? All right. So they know that we can just make a 20-20 here and block. So doing that for Seiju on the favor of the Mirror Breaker was what won us that game. So I may have misplayed horribly in the second game at one point. It was with an inconsequential thing, to be fair, but it was still a use of resources that was wrong. But I need to warm the old brain cells before I start a league sometimes. But we are 1-0, and I love this deck against Blood Moon decks because they just enable us a bit more easily. All right, let's go to round two. We're on the play for round two. We have a turn two 20... We have thoughts these into turn two 2020. So that's how we drew up. Because turn one, we thought these. Turn two, we play this. And the Bayou, the Bayou becomes a Dark Depths, which then becomes a, Theth, uh, a Hex Mage. So this seems like a pretty good one. If our opponent has Wasteland, they take this out. And that's not the end of the world for us. All right, let's... Have a little look what our opponent's working with over there. Source to Plowshares, Ponder. Okay, so one of these cards interacts with what we're doing, the others don't. So let's take the one card that does interact and see how we fare. Is our opponent a Wasteland deck? Uh, that's something to think about. So there's a Tundra. And there's a Ponder. I think we do our, make our 2020 in our opponent's end step. Hopefully our opponent's going to shuffle here. I chose not to shuffle. Interesting. Okay, we don't need to do a crop rotation line here, which is nice for us. We can just play out the start depths. Play this out. If this doesn't resolve, we can then go and get Thespian stage. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold up here, because they could have Prismatic Ending, which we can play around for free here. If they do have a Wasteland, we can then play the Pitting Needle to cover that next turn. This is the key part on Magic Online. We need to make sure... That you press the right buttons. Hmm, our, opponent, our opponent is just keeping mana open. Sure. I'm going to play around their removal with Sejiri Step and stuff. So we'll play this out. It's free to do so. We will dress our opponent. See what they're working with. Now if our opponent's not tapping out for something, then there's got to be a reason for that, right? It doesn't hurt getting more information about what our opponent's working with. So the crop rotation gets Sejiri Step to protect this from a source to plowshares. So we may as well do that. Force of Will pitching True Name Nemesis. Alrighty. Do I think our opponent is a Days deck? Is the question. If we think our opponent might be a Days deck, then we play. Then we don't play the Pithing Needle here. They're Bant. Are they likely to play Wastelands here? Hmm. We've got four cards in hand, and we know two of them. I think I'd rather play around the Days. There's the Ponder. I shuffle this, then we're probably odds on for winning this game. They shuffle their library. Excellent. Let's make our guy. We're getting here. Stifle. Be a little bit rude. But it's a bit late. They need to stifle the hex mage. Um, this doesn't work the way they think it does. It still has no ice counters on it, so it'll still make the 2020. I need to hit the hex mage. Uh, I'll explain to my opponent in a second after I kill them. All right, so we've won that one. I'll just explain to my opponent how some of these reaction interactions work. And we'll go to sideboarding. So this is a deck that is going to try and remove our guys. So we would like Steely Resolves. We don't know. So they're not really a graveyard deck, so we can take out this Pajuka block. We don't know how much these Pithy Needles are going to be useful. So we'll drop two of them, and we're going to run it like this. It looks like our opponent is just sort of like a Bant Stoneblade deck. Now, Collector Roof can deal with Stoneblade. doesn't stop living weapons, though. So I think we're just going to do our thing and have a bunch of protection here with some Thought Seizes and Duresses to poke holes. And we'll submit. We're into round, uh, to, to game two of match two, and this is our opening hand. We cannot keep this. Time to chat with our opponent. Seem like a, a lovely human being. Cheers. We like to see. Let's mulligan. So this hand will have us requiring one thing to do something. Is it worth having this one thought seize? We have double depths here, but we need to find any sort of green spell to go and find the other thing. I think we could keep this one. We can probably get rid of it's probably the bayou here. 
We can always go fetch that if we need it, but we have access to both of our basics here in case there's some sort of back to basics build. I assume we're going to get some sort of island ponder first turn because our opponent doesn't look like they're going to be like delvers. It's going to be stone forge. Okay, hierarchy, yeah, sure. So it's going to. Their, their threats are two drops. So what are we doing here? I think we will lead out with this Urborg and try out a Thoughtseize on our opponent. They can daze here if they want to. It'll stop them from casting True Name, which will buy us some good amount of time. Okay, so there's the daze. Sure. So we don't take two life for this either, which is the end of the world. And we carry on. We will need to draw some more stuff here. Like This hand was kind of settling in for a mid-length game rather than racing because in these sorts of matchups you kind of want to do that. I would very much like to not draw any more lands unless they're Thespian stage, please. Now we have a lot of land to throw away as crop rotations, which is kind of what you need in these blue matchups. I've tried playing blue matchups where you board out crop rotation, but it's just so essential for this deck, it's just not worth doing. You need to have um Pithy, is this gonna do anything for us here? They've already used two Misty Rainforests, so it's probably not going to be doing a great deal for us. Could be looking at Playing Stoneforge Mystic, we can wait for them to play the Stoneforge and then we can Pith and Needle it. I think we play this Vert and Catacombs out in case we need to get a basic. But like I was saying, uh, in these matchups, I've tried boarding out crop rotation, but it makes our deck just on the whole so inefficient. And like, we're kind of floundering to get the right pieces. So even though it's not very good in the face of blue decks, I think it's worth playing. Alright, so we're going to take two from this Hierarch, which is not a lot. We can certainly take that for a number of turns. Again, we do need to draw one half of our combo here, though. So it's going to be a true name nemesis. Sure. So this is going to attack for five. So this is a much quicker clock. Uh, not a great draw, truth be told. So I think we play out our Dark Depths now in case we draw a Thespian stage. Are we looking at playing Pith and Needle to stop Wasteland here? I think it's probably worth doing. I don't know if our opponent is playing Wasteland. The other thing we could name with this is Ottawara, so they can't bounce our creature. But we're kind of in a horrible spot here. We've just drawn lands. Uh, well, I guess we drew a Pithy Needle, but that's not great either. So this is five this turn. So this is the four turn clock. So I imagine if we brick on the next two draws, it's likely game over. Because our opponent's a blue deck, and they're probably going to have some attempt at sculpting here. There's a Stoneforge Mystic that I was thinking about Pithy Needling. Sure. So this changes the clock again. They're probably going to get Cauldra. Sure. It's five. Next turn we take uh, eight damage because it's better if they attack with both of these next turn. So this will put us dead in two turns. So I think we are cracking our fetch hand here. Uh, cracking to thin isn't really a thing most of the time, but we are so in trouble here that we kind of need the minuscule percentages. So if we thought these here, we die pretty much on the spot. Let's just play this buy you out. How are we going to win this game? We can block the Calder, then we just die to it. Next turn, we can't block this. We take five, six, seven, eight. And then if we take a single point of damage, we die. I think we can probably call this one here. We haven't got anything like right of consumption to kill their stuff here. All right, so am I inclined to have more pithing needles? to name Stoneforge. That is a thing that we can slow them down with. I don't know if it's worth doing though. They might also have Caracas in their deck, which is the other thing, but Steely Resolve has that covered. I think we just submit as we've got here. The Poseidon isn't great. It's not gonna hit that many of their things, but it can hit Caracas and it might hit some of the other equipments like a Badass Girl. So I think we'll submit like this. Our plan is to have a better hand. We probably should have mulliganed more aggressively in the last one. Let's have a look. We cannot keep this. What about this one? Um, okay. This is a turn three with protection of varying kinds. Which seems nice to me. Do I think our opponent is going to be playing something like a wasteland? Or I could try and cheese them and name the... We could try and name Flooded Strand and just try and mess with our opponent because they are Bant deck, but they could just draw Misties and that doesn't feel great. Do I think our opponent's going to have Wastelands? Uh, we keep these. One of these cards has to go. I guess, just trying to think here. Maybe it is the Pith Needle that goes here. If they have Wastelands in their Bant deck, 
that's trying to cast like blue blue spells and sucks for us but such is life sometimes right so we'll play out with Verdant Catacombs so we get Verdant Catacombs next time we play Steely Resolve we can pay around days if we have to so next time we play the Thespian stage and deploy the Steely Resolve alright it's not a bad draw here and we go and get ourselves a Bayou we got Stifle I do not have a Stifle let's cast this green and one Looks like they're cracking for something. One white mana. A daze. Are we going to pay around this daze? Or are we just going to make our guy next turn with not this world back up? Which of these is safer? Hmm. I think we'll pay. Now we have a lot of lands in our deck. So the chance of us drawing a land are pretty high. So we're going to an avatar. Which is the creature type of Merit Lage. We have we don't have crop rotation up now if they do have wastelands though. But we can crop rotate this away for a Yavimaya or an Urborg and activate our Dark Depths, but I'd rather not do that because that exposes us to a counter spell that we don't have to. So we'd rather just draw a land. Our opponents also set back away on t in terms of their threats. Ponder. Just gonna be a shuffle. Or are they gonna like what they see? They shuffled. That's good for us. Back over to us. We've drawn on land. That's pretty good. So play this one out. I don't think we want to crop rotate here at all. And we can just play the Thespian stage and just do it all next turn. We're not under a, a clock here. Our creature is protected. From, we've got two layers of protection here. This one protects it from basically everything. They haven't played a wasteland here, which is nice. Like we would have crop rotated away something that they wastelanded. All right, a ponder. So what is our opponent looking for in this situation? Not sure what gets them out of where of this situation, to be honest. And a land here. So we'll play out our other Thespian stage here, and we'll pass a turn, and we'll make a 2020 in our opponent's end step with two layers of protection. So hopefully our opponent's just got a grip of counter spells that aren't going to do anything. I imagine their answers to Steely Resolve are going to be things like Prismatic Ending, which is going to force them to tap out of white here. They could have Ice Fangs, an Uro, sure. So this puts their life total above 20, which is actually quite important here. But it's going to be difficult for them to remove our 2020, considering we've got the crop rotation if we get to untap as well. Although this gives Shroud, but we won't have to protect it unless our opponent gets rid of our Steely Resolve anyway. So we're going to copy this, paying two mana, keep the one without counters on, make 2020, get to put our opponent to two. This can't be Wrath either. Okay, a Ghost Quarter, so we'll go to Tax. All right, our opponent needs to remove our Steely Resolve and get through Not of This World and Crop Rotation. They could play something like an Ice Fang and Protect, but this is not a Snow Basic, so they probably don't have Ice Fangs in their deck. I'm not sure what flies they're gonna have in their deck, if any. A Brainstorm, sure. It's a good way to start finding an answer, but we've done a good job of forcing our stuff through and hopefully this can go all the way. I don't have the mana to, to fairy and blowing up Steely Resolve. Terminus is something that they could feasibly have and then draw a card on our turn and do the Terminus play. So I think in order to play around the Terminus, we're supposed to Ghost Quarter of the Tundra. Okay, yeah, so we Ghost Quarter of the Tundra so that if they have a white source, they have to shuffle their library so they can't Terminus us. Term us, us. So I think we navigated that one quite nicely. The second game, our hand was a little bit weak. Uh, I thought we could settle in for a longer game, but we kind of just drew nothing. I think we probably should have gone to five, if I'm being honest with myself in retrospect. All right, so we're 2-0. Oh. Let's go to round three. On the play for round three... This is our opener. Interesting. So we can duress on turn one, turn two, one, two mana to go and get Dark Depth. So we're not, so we've got like a turn three here, but we've got some duress to interact with our opponent with. I think this is fine. Perfectly serviceable. Now you could argue that we're supposed to get a swamp here. But I think we want the Bayou because we want to get this Sylvan Scrying. So we're just going to get a Bayou. And have a little peek at what our opponent's working with. 
Okily dokily. So, they're going to play a Chalice of the Void next turn. Not a big fan of that, but I don't care about it that much. I think the Trinisphere is more annoying. So, I'm going to take the Trinisphere, leave the hand open like this, and then I'm going to play out this Lotus Petal. And then I'm going to pass a turn. Now, we can get punished if we draw a crop rotation, because then we're certainly just going to play the uh, Chalice here. Sure. So the Chalice and the Ancient Tomb gone. Which one is this? Six mana does some stuff. Okay. A good description. That's a little bit annoying, because we're going to have to use this this turn. So I think we exile this. Cast this. We're going to get Sylvan Scrying out here for Dark Depths. So next time we can make this with protection up. Uh, is it worth us playing this now? Uh, no. I don't think so. I think we pass. There's a mountain we know about. And a Trinisphere. That's a little bit annoying. It's going to slow us down. Unless we draw like a Spirit Guide now. We did not draw a Spirit Guide. Play this one out. And... This doesn't tap for mana, unfortunately. So we have to wait a turn. If we find any mana source, we just get to go. So there's a Shadow Skull. One, two, three, four. A Chandra. Okay, we beat this. Ah, uh, not this world isn't going to work, though. Okay, Chalice of the Void has entered the Exile Zone. Are you going to play Chalice for zero? Seems like a bad play. A land, please. It's a land. It's a pretty good land. Um... Let me cast this guy and then pass. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see what we're going to exile here. Chalice of the Void. That doesn't do anything here. We got you. Okay, he's two blanks in hand, a chalice, and one mystery card. They've conceded. Sure. So, our opponent is definitely going to have some amount of blood moons. So, we would like Abrupt Decay's in, Nod this world's out. How useful do we think Pithing Needles are going to be in this matchup? They've, got, they've shown us a lot of Planeswalkers, so I think we're going to want to keep these Pithing Needles in. Do we want any Collector Roofs to slow down some of their other mana sources? I don't think so. I think we're just on Decays and Needles here. And I don't think Bajuka Bog is very good, so maybe we can cut that for a loof. But against a deck that seems more all-in on Trinisphere than regular uh, Prison decks, maybe we want to just have this in as a land. Uh, I think I, I don't mind that just as another land to make sure that we can get up to the mana to cast it. To cast our spells. Alright, what does our hand do here? Not a fan of this one. Like, we can crop rotate for our thing, but we're so far behind mana-wise. We can't beat a Blood Moon with this hand either. Well, we, we can beat it with Besaidu, but how are we casting it? We need to get another green source, etc, etc. So this feels like a pretty easy mulligan to me. What do we have here? So we have two colours to get it. We don't actually go anywhere with this hand, so I think we can do better. All right, this is easily the best hand we've seen so far. Uh, we can keep this. Two cards have got around the bottom. So the Bajuka Bog probably has to go. And then one of these has to go. I think the Thoughtseize goes rather than the Crop Rotation. Like they're both probably going to get shut down by a Chalice anyway, but Crop Rotation does let us go and get the Thespian Stage. So we float two mana, Use the petal to crop rotate into the stage, and then we go ahead. So that's a turn two kill, uh, a turn two 2020. This also gives us half of our mana if we need to cast the abrupt decay. So we'll say, go with that. Just a mountain and a spirit guide. So it's probably going to be the chalice that I said that's probably going to lock our. Yeah, sure. We were expecting that to happen. That's fine. All right, this is pretty reasonable. Um, I guess we can play. Couple of petals out because we know our opponent is a Chalice of the Void deck. So we can end the turn, blow up the Void, make the Dark Depths, and then crop rotate away. Yeah, okay, so we can make a 2020 next turn through the Chalice here. Depends what our opponent plays though. Like if they play a Blood Moon, we'll just play the Dark Depths and just go off. Trinisphere. How do we feel about Trinisphere? That was an interesting one. Like if we blow this up in response and then we're not really going anywhere, I think we just let this resolve. We don't need to draw much here. Another crop rotation probably isn't one of the things we wanted to draw, though. Hmm, I'm debating whether or not we actually want this Dark Depths in play. It does tap for mana, which is important, so I think this is fine. 
So we can do this to blow up the chalice and then we can do this to crop rotate, but then we're going to be mana shy of activating. So, all right, what we're going to see here from our opponent. Khan the Great Creator. Not a fan of this one, as you can probably imagine. What is our solution to this? Right, we're definitely cracking these, so I guess we're going to go black and green. We're going to be casting this. Am I more worried about Trinisphere or Chalice? I think I'm more worried about Chalice here. So I'm going to take the Chalice out and we'll pay the extra one. Like our things aren't working there anyway. This way if we draw a crop rotation, uh, if we draw a green source, we actually have the mana to crop rotate the last card into a 2020. So what are they going to find here? Probably in Snaring Bridge, I'd imagine. There it is. So we have five answers left to that in the deck. A Dark Depths. That doesn't do it, does it? So we just have to pass. I think our opponent is favoured for this point. We've sort of taken a bit longer to get going here. Another reason why Pithonia is going to be good in this matchup, though. So there's a Great Furnace. And there's an Instant Bridge. Sure. Okay, so we can make a 2020 whenever we wish. More or less. This is our only green source, though, so we don't really want to do that. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Sure. So our plan is to draw a Besaidu and Besaidu away the Incinerary Bridge. We could get rid of our Urborg into making a 2020 here. And that way, if we draw the Besaidu, we just win straight up. It's not so bad. Uh, but again, we need, we need more mana for that, wouldn't we, still? Because this is three mana for a crop rotation. We need another land. So I think we're just going to have to take some more draws to Okay, this is a good one. This lets us go crop rotate with one mana up. Okay, this also just means we have crop rotation in the bag when we need it. Because we'll have a green source available to us. So we're pretty much just looking to draw Poseidu or Sylvan Scrying here, I think. I think we might actually get rid of the Urborg here in the turn. Actually, no, is that a good idea or not? No, it doesn't seem like a great idea, does it? Play the mirror breaker, sure. Hmm. So do we make a 2020 here? One, two, three, four, five, six. So next turn they lattice us out. So I think we have to go relatively soon. Right, let's go for green, black, black. And I guess we have to get rid of our bayou here for the Thespian stage. This is an okay-ish draw. So, Elvish Spirit Guide will still function as a mana source. So we can still draw Besaidu to get us out of this, even if they let us lock us. Uh, we can just blow up the Ensnaring Bridge and then come across for lethal. That's a thing we can do here. So I guess we're going to do that. So we can block and kill one of these, which is something. Obviously, we're going to have like Reflection of Kiki Jiki nonsense coming on here. So, like we're not in a great spot, but we do have an out in this situation. So there's an uh, ancient tomb. Khan, what are they going to find here? Is this lattice? It is lattice. So we go. Thespian stage becomes a copy of Dark Depths, and we'll pay for it with these two. Keep this one, get a 2020. So we just need to draw Besaidu because it only costs one because uh, Marit Lage is a legendary, and I believe our Elvish Spirit Guide still pitches because it's not an artifact. Because uh, this is artifacts in play, you can't activate the abilities of, whereas th this is in our hand, so we still get to exile this for a green mana. So Weirdly, we're okay. I'm pretty sure we can still do this. Yeah, there you go. There's the confirmation. So if we draw a Besaidu, we do just win the game here. We do get to gobble these up, so our opponent's going to have to find a way of attacking through and killing us. Now, it's not necessarily going to be difficult when they've got a Khan going, but they're clearly valuing these treasure tokens. Let's draw a Besaidu and win the game, please. One time. Um... Uh, we do play this out in case... I don't think we're going to need to crop rotate anything away here. But we can't attack, so we'll just pass the turn. Just trying to draw Besaidu. Trying to think if we have any lands that do anything by just nature of being in play. I don't think we do. 
So they're going to start taking our lands out. That's actually totally fine with me. That's a weird one to take because it was making their ancient tomb tap without hurting them. Not that I think that's a big deal. Let's see what they have here for a big bunch of mana. A Chandra. Okay, that's fine. That's a clock. It's something we're going to have to beat. But again, we do have a thing that we can draw that just wins us the game. That's not one of the things that we can draw that wins us the game. But if we... No, we don't have a black spirit guide, do we? So that's not going to work. Um, don't play this out. Give our opponents something to waste their time with. Distract them a little bit. So this Chandra Clock isn't the fastest. If we draw a second Elvish Spirit Guide, then we're getting towards... We need to draw two Elvish Spirit Guides in order to get the Sylvan Scrying into Besaidu going. But I think our opponent is probably just going to make a bunch of guys end the turn with the Reflection Combo, because they can target... One can target the other one, and then you can just make as many as you've got mana for, and they can probably kill us next turn. So... It's be a great turn to draw a Besaji. A basic swamp. That's not really the one, but we'll play it anyway. Keep our opponent distracted. Our opponent didn't do the reflection of Kiki Jiki trick to attack us for 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12. They could have. 13, 14. Yeah, they could have killed us if they'd have done the reflection of Kiki Jiki trick. Let's see what our opponent's got here. A white source. Challenge of the Void for 4. Okay, so this is to play around Force of Vigor, but Force of Vigor doesn't work because you don't have green cards to pitch. Besaidu, on the other hand, does work. So we're just trying to play to our single out. We have two of them in our deck, so it's not, strictly speaking, a single out. Let's keep going. Unbelievable. Okay, so we will blow this up. Exciting miss. Absolutely beautiful way of playing Magic the Gathering right there. Attack our opponent for 20. Boom. So we should have lost that game if our opponent copied their Reflection of Kikijiki. Because uh, what this does is you make a copy of a Kikijiki with haste in the beginning of the end, uh, in our end step. And then the other one comes and then makes a copy of another one and then another one. So basically for every mana you have, you can get a 2-2 two, two to attack with because they won't die until your end step. So I don't think we got lucky there. I think our opponent misplayed and gave us a window to win. But I'll take it with 3-0. We beat, beat the Karnlock. I think on the play we probably win this game as well. Didn't see like they were uh, much into the old Blood Moons though. Which is interesting. But yeah. Alright. We're 3-0. Let's see if we can keep it running. Our hand does the thing, right? So we can go turn 1. We can go and get a Urborg. Turn 2 we can go and get the... Dark Depths. Like, this is fine. We're on the draw, so maybe we'll get another card that will help us out, like a Thoughtseize or something. Would be great. Possibly a Pithy Needle, depending on what our opponent's playing. Alright. Polluted Delta. Opponent's on a blue deck. Understood. So I think we will play this one out. And we will pass here. I want to keep this Spirit Guide back in case we need to play around a daze. Hopefully we'll get a bit of an idea what our opponent's doing in a minute. So I don't want to play into something like a uh, misstep or something here. So there's no point trying to do the crop rotation right there and then. Also, the less information our opponent has, the better, in my opinion. Let's have a look. I guess the other option there was playing the Paducah Bog, but I don't know if the Paducah Bog was going to be useful. You draw two cards and lose two life. Okay, Knight's Whisper. I don't see that every day. Do I want to crop rotate into our opponent's face? I don't think so. Um... If we do crop rotate here and it goes wrong, that's real bad for us. I think we can play this one possibly slightly slower, but I'm not entirely sure about that one. So, interesting choices here. How quickly do we need to go? Knight's Whisper feels more like a combo card. Now it's just trying to power and draw some cards through. So maybe we're supposed to... I wish we would play the Bajuka Bog turn one now, but... Oh yeah. Maybe we try a crop rotation here. If this resolves, it's going to give us more of an idea what to do with the rest of our turn. We can pay around days here. Okay, so that just happened. Interesting. So, we get dark depths here. We'll crack this. Felt like our opponent might have had a daze then. And they were thinking about using it or not. Get this by you, and we will rotate again for Urborg. 
and we'll cast our Vampire Hex Rage. And that's just stuck as well. That's very odd. Um, Knight's Whisper, is that going to be a Wasteland deck? I don't think so. I'd rather this gets hit by a Sudden Edict. That's the thing they have. Brazen Borrow is another thing they can have here too. A Brainstorm. So our opponent is fishing for something. I don't think it's very likely that our opponent can Doomsday and kill us this turn, but it's possible if they're on a Doomsday deck. I imagine our opponent is somewhere within the combo spectrum. That certainly looks like a combo card to me. So the Lotus Petal. Cracking it for a Ponder. Okay, this is good. I'm not sure what they can have apart from Stifle here that stops us. Underground C. Okay, so now they can have a Borrower. A Lotus Petal. Have they got Doomsday into Cycler in hand? A Cabal Ritual. Yep. Cast Doomsday. So our opponent might not have a line to win the game here. They've got three cards in hand. So if they've got a Brainstorm in hand here, then sure, they're just going to get us. This is basically us losing to play or draw if they do win here. But they might just be using Doomsday to have a look. Okay, so they're putting a Knight's Whisper in their pile by the looks of things. It's highlighted at the moment. Okay, let's have a look at our opponent's pile, or rather the things that didn't make our opponent's pile. Uh, I don't see a Lion's Eye Diamond here. I don't see... There's a lot I don't see here, actually. There's no... Is this a Brainstorm? If they've got a Brainstorm in hand, we almost certainly lose. Yeah, this is... Tendrils of Agony is an interesting one. Uh, Bolus is Citadel. Okay, our opponent's on an interesting build here. So there's a Lion's Eye Diamond. We don't have any way of interacting with this, unfortunately. So if they've got Deep Analysis in hand now, they can crack this. Uh, sure, it's so a Cycling, so they're going to... Three mana, three cards in library, consider. And then they can just play the Thassa's Oracle and kill us here. And there's nothing we can do about it. Okay, they're doing it with a completely empty library. Yeah, that's an unfortunate one. So, how do we beat this deck is the question. This feels like a tougher one. Like, Collector Roof can slow them down a bit. And maybe Steely Resolve can stop some of their things. But we're not getting much done here. This shuts off Lion's Eye Diamond lines and it shuts off um, Lotus Petals and things. I think that's probably okay. I guess we can take out a Besage you and have a Pitting Needle here. We did see the Bolus's Citadel, so the Collector Roof is going to be more of a thing I'm interested in having here. I think this is about as good as it's going to get, really. Mm, too slow. That's Mulligan. This doesn't have a Dark Depths available to it, but it does have double Thoughtseize. Our opponent is Mulligan to six. I think I can keep a double Thoughtseize hand on our opponent's Mull to six, and we can just pitch this not of this world for now, because we're going to be able to see our opponent's hand. We have a strategy. We can get a Besage here because our opponent's not going to be messing with our lands. And we also want Black Black for this next turn. Buy you. So we'll play out this Lotus Pearl. We don't really want to fire it off here. But it might make our opponent think twice about dazing. Okay, so just letting us go for it. So we've got Profane Tutor, Doomsday, Ponder. I think we'll take the Ponder here. This can go wrong if our opponent just immediately plays... Uh, a Dark Ritual. But I'm willing to take that chance. What are we going to draw here? An Elvish Spirit Guide. What does that do here? Very little, unfortunately. So I think we're just going to Thought Seeds again here. So, what do we want? The Doomsday is a thing they can cast next turn, so I think we just have to take that because it's the thing their whole deck is built around doing. Do we play the Besaidu or do we hold the Besaidu as a thing we can do to mess with our opponent's lands? Considering this doesn't do anything right now, I think we're just supposed to hold it. It's a little bit awkward. We're one crop rotation away from killing our opponent. A uh, Sylvan Scrying can do it over the course of one additional turn. Okay, so there's the Underground C. They're going to suspend this Profane Tutor, I imagine. There it is. Yeah, sure. Over to us. A Lotus Petal. Okay, I think this turn we're just going to make a guy to attack with. And we'll play out this Lotus Petal. And we'll take it. So this means we can hold up a Besaidu if that's the thing we need to do. So if our opponent does an LED line, we can blow up the LED at an inopportune moment for them. Potentially. So 
I played this out instead of the polluted delta, which is a slight mistake because we have better information in their hand right now. Another one of these. All right. Immediate command beat down like it is, I guess. We will be playing out this second hex mage here. Just getting our clock on. I don't think we play the Besage still. Like if we're just on playing some hex mages and besaging our opponent, then that's a thing we're going to do. Our clock isn't very fast. It's kind of like a four turn clock because if they pop any of their fetches. It's going to be troublesome for them. So they do get to tutor for presumably Doomsday this turn. So the hope is we destroy one of their lands that messes with their whole pile. I have to imagine it's Doomsday they're casting here. And they got Burdus of Citadel. We can put a 2020 into play, or we can blow up their Citadel. Interesting choice, to be honest. I think we just uh, blow up their Citadel. Because they didn't cast Doomsday that turn. That's the thing they've got, right? And that's kind of the juke that they were sort of showing us. Echoing Truth. Do I want to bounce? Do I want this guy to stay and play? Or do I want to just sack this? I think we'll just remove all counters from this. Like we don't have Black Black to recast it anyway. This leaves us with a guy in play and means we can do our thing. Right, let's put it Delta. Are we casting a Bolus's Citadel? Feels like that's what's about to happen here. So we've correctly played the right line here, I would say. Okay, let's see what the top card of the library is. Uh, oh, they get to look at it. Uh, so they're casting a Brainstorm here. So we're going to hit this. No, no thank you, sir. Now they've got instants, they can play them here, but okay, they don't. And they're also not going to get the shuffle off of the Brainstorm here. They're just going to be brainstorming in the dark. All right. Preordained, sure. Where are these going? Scry to two to the bottom. That's what we want to see. An Urborg. Sure. So we'll attack with our Vampire Hex Mage. Uh, we don't actually have to do this right now, right? We can do it next turn and make the guy, because we already played the Airborg this turn. Is that better? Just in case we do need to get something like a Besaju. But realistically, are we going to be able to cast it as well? I think we should probably just be mana efficient here. And uh, we'll go and get Dark Depths. Our opponent's got two draw steps to kill us. They've conceded. Excellent. So some of our plan worked there. I like a Collector Roof just because it beats down. Pithy Needle on Bolus's Citadel isn't the worst thing in the world. But we might be pressured into doing the OC Pale thing. Maybe these not of this world aren't really where we want to be. Place a couple of those with a couple of Pithy Needles. So we've got three Needles, two not of this world. Maybe we can get rid of all of those and just have one not of this world and just try and pick holes with Discard. If our opponent wants to like mess with our Marrow Lage, that means they're not winning the game. So I don't think that's the end of the world for us. This is a tough matchup, for sure. Uh, we don't get to cast any of our spells here. So unfortunately, this one has to go back. Uh, this one also doesn't get to cast any spells, so we're mulliganing here too. This one does get to cast spells. So we can keep this. Two cards have got to go on the bottom. Uh, I want to keep a Thoughtseize. So we're definitely keeping land. We're definitely keeping Thoughtseize. Um, probably keeping Crop Rotation. Probably keeping our other land. Is it the oof that we keep, or sling, or is it the scrying? So we sling the oof and the spirit guide here. Now they could turn one kill us, because that's what the Doomsday deck sometimes does to people. They kept seven, so... Is this just a cheeky ponder, is it? Uh, maybe not. Alright, let's crack this. Do get ourselves a buy. Get a little thought to his action here. We can pay for days as well, which is extra nice. A brainstorm. So they're hiding some cards here. What we could do is we could do like, uh, we could crop rotate into Ghost Quarter and take out this island, which is a weird play, but I'm kind of tempted to do it. So we've got Cabal Ritual, Edge of Autumn, Lotus Petal. Got a bunch of stuff here. I think we'll take the Edge of Autumn, especially if we want this, this line. Do we want to Ghost Quarter them right now? That will leave us with very little resources to work with. But it will mean the top of our opponent's deck is just nothing. Oh, this is a tough call. I have to imagine they're going to cast Doomsday next turn, right? So I think we... To be fair, though, if we do that, they can just uh, 
choose not to find because uh, Ghost Quarters are May. So I'm pretty sure Ghost Quarters are May. Yeah, so our opponent will just choose to... Yeah, they'll just choose to not search because they've got so much mana in here. Even if we blow up this island, it's not going to do anything. So that's a little bit awkward for us. And Verdant Catacombs. That's not a bad one. Let's crack this for another Bayou. Might as well be. I think we have to try and accomplish our own game plan a little bit here. Let's get uh, Silver Scrying on the go for our Dark Depths. So next turn we can make a 2020. But I don't know if that's going to be good enough. A Brainstorm. Okay, maybe our opponent's Brainstorm wasn't actually just the nuts. They weren't hiding stuff. All right. Okay. This is where it all goes wrong for us, I think. A Doomsday. Let's see what pile our opponent, or what our opponent doesn't put in their pile and see if we can work out what we're trying to beat. All right, this is our opponent's leftovers. Let's see. So there's no Lion's Eye Diamond in there. Uh, is there a second island? That's something that's worth checking out. Uh, probably should have taken a look at how many islands they played in the first place. So no Cavern of Souls in here. Feels like they're very much on the faster plan. Um, there's one Edge of Autumn. Two Edge of Autumn. Can't see any Street Wraiths. There's n there's a Consider. Okay. A Duress. So we know two of our opponent's cards. Can we take them off of enough blue to win the game with? But then we have to win the game as well at some point. Hmm. This is a tough little situation. I don't think... Our opponent must have set up a pile that they can win the game next turn. I think that's very much where we're at here so let's have a look so how many lotus petals one two two lotus petals there so it looks like they've gone for like the multiple doomsday line here so we can take that doomsday away how many lotus petals one lotus petal two lotus petals three lotus petal so we can play this dark depths uh, it's tough just trying to work out how much of our opponent's mana we can smash this turn i think we play this out we know our opponent doesn't have any mana right now so i think we besage you away the underground sea okay so they did have another land awkward but that shuffled their piles so they might not be able to win now and then we can try and ghost quarter away okay knight's whisper so they got one card in their library Hmm. So if we'd have made the 2020, we might have been all right. Although we didn't know really what was in their pile. So we have this Urborg here that we're playing. So our opponent's got one card in hand. They can't lose to a 2020. If we ghost quarter away in their island, they still have enough to play the guy. Um, I think our opponent kills us here. I don't know if we can do anything about it. They have one card in hand. Uh, one card in their library, three cards in hand. We just need a card that mills them for one. That'd be great, but we don't have that card. Let's crop rotate here. We know they got two Echoing Truths and one blank in hand. We get a Ghost Quarter. And take out an island. It's not going to make a difference, unfortunately. And then they get us, unless they've made a horrible mistake with their pile and they were trying to double Doomsday us. But like, you, you have to put the uh, Oracle in, into your pile to do that, though. So they must, they unless they've made a horrible misclick somewhere on the lines. Yeah, we just lose that one. That was unfortunate. We felt really close there. Like, if our opponent's hand doesn't have double echoing truth there, maybe we can get around it. But, yeah, our opponent's hand was just too good. So this sort of matchup is one of the ones where they can just absolutely get you because they're a faster combo deck, or at least on parity usually, but they have a lot more protection effects than we do. Because they are just casting a spell. Alright, a bit unfortunate. We've dropped to 3 1. Let's see if we can get a 4 1. Alright, we're on the play for the final round. Our hand is terrible, so we're going to mulligan it. This hand, on the other hand, seems pretty good to me. I think we can keep this one. One of these has got to go. We need to keep our green sources. And we need to keep this for this. Probably want the. Uh, so we'll turn to with Thoughtseize if we keep the Urborg. Is that right? No, we 
you know, we do have turn two of all, right? Yeah. So we get rid of the swamp. A little bit dicey, but I'll take it. Let's thought he's our opponent. I hope it's good. Brainstorm, force of will, force of will, fable and break. Okay, we'll take one of these force of wills here. That's not incredible for us, truth be told. It's going to be difficult to get through that. But if they brainstorm, they might not have a blue card, so they shouldn't be brainstorming anyway. They should just be holding this blue card. Yep. A Sylvan Scrying. Uh, this can tap for black, so I think we're more inclined to do this and cast the Sylvan Scrying. I'm not expecting this to resolve. We're going to brainstorm first. That would be a mistake, unless they've got a blue card already in hand. You already have a blue card. Why are you doing this? Okay, Force of Will, Snap Custom Mage. Sure, we weren't expecting that one to resolve. What we don't want to get hit by is a Wasteland, but our opponent has shown us bad lands, so they're probably a three-color deck, which might not be able to fit the uh, sort of stuff in anyway. All right, so we're looking for a land. Ideally, a land that taps for green mana would be aces here. Yuck. Okay, I think we are now officially losing this game. So we're probably going to lose the Scrying here. Oh no, we lost the Hex Mage. Interesting. I guess if we top deck the 2020, then they're in trouble. I guess. We'll play this out. Cast this for green and black. Going to get ourselves a Thespian Stage. Can't play this out this turn. Let's hope our opponent isn't playing him to Turak. Line of Bolt and Fable the Mirror Breaker are not going to be particularly useful here. Like they can play Fable the Mirror Breaker to try and find an answer, like a Brazen Borrower. That's what they're probably going to do this turn, I would imagine. Yeah, so next, so they get one draw step before this connects with them. So they get to see three new cards. Another Dark Depths. Interesting. I don't think our opponent's going to have Wastelands. So we're going to do this end of turn in case our opponent has some sort of sorcery speed removal spell. No Wastelands, sure. This could be a Baleful Strix, which is something we have to sort of punch through. Reckless Impulse, sure. So do we get to see these cards or not? I can't remember. Uh, it doesn't look like we do. Oh no, there they are. Uh, interesting. Neither of these cards stop them from losing the game to what we have in play right now. Uh, how do they... How do they cast this off of Volcanic... Oh, because of my Urborg. Yeah, sure. Curse you, Urborg. Right. Let's make a 20-20. A nice Thespian stay... Uh, a nice... Uh, Sajiri step off the top. Not a Sajiri step off the top. Sure. Good attacks. We will kill their Bale for Strix. We will play a Dark Depths. Do you play out this Lotus Petal? I think we do, in case it gets thought seized out of our hand. I, we'd rather have access to Green Mana. Alright. So our opponent doesn't have a removal spell that kits, kills our guy in their graveyard, which is nice. So the Snapcaster might have to be brainstorming to find something. Okay, I don't like this very much. Maybe they're doing this just to have the most amount of mana when they start doing stuff. I don't like them not entering the scoop phase immediately. So this is probably going to be Snapcaster Ponder. Unless they have a Brazen Borrower in hand already. But we know these two cards in their hand. Oh no, we don't. the Lightning Bolt's gone actually. They have one Mystery card. Alright, so they've got this guy again. This old Chestnut. Surprised they're not doing Snapcaster Ponder though. Here it is. Yeah, so there's a Snapcaster. And they're doing a Reckless Impulse. Sure. Hymns of Turak and Brainstorm. Sure, so they've got those for next turn. So Jerry Step, please. Um, yeah, so this is Jerry Step, isn't it? Two cards in our opponent's hand. Uh, we'll also float mana off of this. Float mana off of this. Alright, I think we've got that one. Sure, so our opponent has conceded that one. All right, Grixis. Hmm. How much removal are they going to have that actually hits our guys? So they're probably going to have Sudden Edict and Brazen Borrowers. So Steel Resolve works to an extent there. But don't really like it too much. Pin the Needle doesn't seem great either. Hmm. I think maybe looking at like a couple of Abrupt Decays. I'm trying to think what we saw. We just saw like Fetch Lands and stuff. Maybe we just want these abrupt decays just so that our opponent can't buy time. We can just blow up their guy and just sail through. 
if they do have something like a blood moon, which is possible, but unlikely. Um, sure. So this is where our really dedicated sideboard slots are not so useful because ordinarily we'd have more removal here, uh, more discard here. So our hand does not make 2020. This hand does make a 2020. I will keep this hand. That is how you evaluate hands with this deck. I think we will throw away the, the Seiju. That's a slower one here. Let's see. We're probably just going to get Thought Seized and then lose our Hex Mage. We can still combo our opponent out. It's just going to take a bit longer. We have to go and find Thespian Stage and all that nonsense. So them Thought Seizing on turn one means that we would rather have the Seiju over the Lotus Petal here. But the Lotus Petal was better on what the basis of our hand was to begin with. Oh, they took the Sylvan Scrying. Interesting. That means they probably have a counter spell for our guy. All right, let's thought through our opponents and see what they're working with. Chuck Buckle. They can't daze this because they've got no blue source. Okay, Reckless Impulse, Brazen Borrower, Snapcaster Mage. Um, we'll take the Borrower and leave them with no out to our guy for next turn. That seems like a fine way of playing Magic the Gathering to me. I'm going to play out the scoring turn. They are. Okay. So they have one mystery card. It's just going to be a Reckless Impulse. Let's see what they find. Baleful Strix and a Brainstorm. Okay. So if we do our Dark Depths, we only get one shot at it because of Surgical Extraction. Which is really important to note here. And certainly come undone. An Urborg. Does that change anything here? No, it doesn't. Uh, play this out. Play this one out. We'll cast this guy. Black. Black. And we'll... Oh, so the Breakfast Impulse is gone. They have one Mystery card. So this extraction means that we're very much all in on this Dark Depths. There's a Brainstorm. So they're looking to find a land to put this Baleful Strix in unless they can find a land and an actual answer to our Dark Depths. Here comes the Strix. Sure. I think we do have to enter the all-in stage of this game. That's kind of what we came here for. I'm going to wait till we draw in case they snap another one from our hand. At least they should do. Uh, crop rotation is not my other card. Uh, we're gonna exile this. Oh, we didn't manage that. We're gonna play this. Uh, this means we we can get round sudden edict. Also means that we might have a clock that can do something if something does happen to our Merit Lage, but we probably do lose a game if Lage goes. Fury. Pitching favor the mirror breaker. I do not like this play very much. This means that they might have an answer to our merit lage here. This feels like clear out the guy, sudden edict you. Yeah, there's a sudden edict. Uh, so how do we win this game now? Vampire X Mage beatdown? Is it worth playing this game? I don't think it's worth my time. Let's just go along. Yeah, our opponent's hand was pretty good. So we know they've got sudden edict. Is there anything we can really do about that? Not particularly. I still like the Abrupt Decays. Like, if we'd have drawn one at the right time, we would have been able to push through and just win the game. I think we... Not this world protects us from Brazen Borrowers, but we can't really be protected from Edicts very easily. I think we just have to resubmit and go... Go hard. What does this hand do? This hand is a... Turn 3... A turn 3 Merit Lage... Turn four. I think we can keep this. Mm. Let me play this one out and pass. If our opponent goes to Thought Sees Us, we'd probably turn this into a Yavimaya. A Ponder, sure. A Crop Rotation. Okay. That's certainly a thing that we have. And we'll go and get ourselves a Bayou here. Get ourselves green and this. What do we want here? Probably it just is the, just another Dark Depths. I think it's probably just another Dark Depths is fine here. We can Crop Rotation and Bajooka Bog ourselves to get around a Dark Depths, getting wastelanded. So we can use the Elvish Spirit Guide to, for, the, for mana here instead, to make our guy. I would not mind a Discard Spell here. We found a Discard Spell. Okay, so we play this out. We dress our opponent here, see what they're working with. 
So we might be getting a brainstorm to hide the information. Yep, that's what it is. Uh, what does this do? Look at the top card of your library. Put it into your hand if you do lose like a mana. It makes little guys. I don't really care about that. They got two snapcasters, so I guess we're just taking this force of will. And then we pass the turn, I think. We're not representing the 2020 right now, so when we crop rotate for it, it should surprise our opponent and maybe get the win. What are they going to play here? Please play a land that isn't that one. Okay, so they played a card that we knew about. Is this going to be Favor the Mirror Breaker? Looks like Favor the Mirror Breaker, sure. Does our opponent have a Force of Will on top of their library? Uh, what, did they put a Force of Will on top of their library in the last turn? That's the question. If this goes wrong, we're in trouble. Okay, we're in, I think. Uh, we'll get a Yavimaya here. GG's, okay. That's a good sign. Keep this one. Alright, so our opponent scooped up there. So we got the 4 1 there. Uh, the one round we lost to was Doomsday, which is a tricky matchup for sure. Uh, if we'd have had. A uh, more traditional sideboard where we ha I normally have two more discard spells in the sideboard. That might have been useful. Excuse me, that might have been useful, but we didn't really draw like the collector roof in the in the times we would have drawn the discard spell anyway. Sometimes you are just gonna find matchups that are a little bit awkward, and that's that. So let's talk about the deck. So I think the last time I played this on my channel, and probably the time before I also went 4-1. So I tend to Go four one a lot with this. Obviously, I um, top eighted a big paper tournament with this deck. Oh, slightly different sideboard, obviously, but and the, the main deck had a Caracas in. But I, but basically, this deck I top eighted a thing with, and it qualified me for European Legacy Masters, which is pretty cool. So, like, this deck is obviously powerful. I think the not of this world is maybe looking like it needs to be trimmed down for another discard effect. Is something I think of. For the future perhaps or we can mess with the sideboard a little bit here because the thing that tends to beat us at the moment is combo decks that go underneath us we kind of grind through most other things relatively well and our sideboard is very well tuned to beating stuff so we have these ley lines to stop people from uh going underneath us if they're graveyard decks but when they're like uh doomsday and stuff they can kind of just shred us before we really get to do very much. So maybe another discard spell might be worth doing. Obviously these not of this worlds seem pretty bad. We didn't really have a good thing to bring in in the matchup. Because we don't have the discard suite. So maybe bringing in some discard. Instead of these collector roofs. Some amount here. But I do like collector roof as a thing that we can do. We could also trim down on Steely Resolve. But I think for the decks that just want to remove your guy. Steely Resolve is very good. So we had that game against... Uh, the Bant deck, I think it was, where we played a Steely Resolve and our opponent finished the game with like seven cards in hand and they just couldn't deal with our Merit Lage. And that's the power of Steely Resolve, so I do really like it. It's just a very powerful way of keeping our stuff alive. Other than that, uh, I don't really think there's anything I would change in this deck list. Uh, the things that you, I think you can tinker with is the fourth Pith and Needle and the fourth Knot of This World. Those are the two that I would think about. The green-black build is automatically better against Wasteland than the rainbow build. So maybe you could skim a Pithing Newell for another discard spell here and just help your combo match up a little bit. So we didn't really play against Wastelands today, which is interesting. But I think that's something you could think about if you wanted to. Also, you could play the Caracas instead of the second Besaidu. Again, I prefer having six answers to problem permanence. And, you know, four in the board, two in the main. That seems like a really good number to me. This is green, which helps you cast your spells. So I think it is just better than Caracas. Even though I do have a lovely English Legends Caracas in paper. I sometimes have it in the sideboard, though. So, yeah. Basically, the things you can tinker with, I would say, is some number of Collector Roof, one Pithy Needle, one Knot of This World. Other than that, I think this deck is great. And I don't really want to change it. I think the way I've been... I was testing for a while, removing crop rotations in blue matchups. I just don't think that's the way to go. I think you need to have access to all your spells. And if it doesn't work, then you lose the game sometimes. And that's life. But you don't want your deck to just have a really high fail rate on its own. I don't think that's worth doing. 
your opponent, you've got to let put your opponent to the test. That's kind of what this deck does a lot of the time. So I don't think boarding out crop rotation in this deck is worth doing. Alternatively, you could play something like Elvish Reclaimer and sort of tweak the list quite a bit to get that. But I think we're just doing our turbo thing and it's good. So that's more or less it for today. I hope you enjoyed that one. If you did, why not uh, leave me a comment and a like? And if you haven't yet, why not subscribe? And if you have subscribed, why not become a member of the channel? And you can pay as little as £2 a month to £20 pound a month. And you can get a few nice little perks, including on the higher end, you can give me donation decks and tell me what to play. So why not do that? All right, I think we're done. So thank you very much for watching and goodbye.